Welcome to the Civilization 3 editor video. As I've promised, I will show the editor and what it can do. Also, I'm trying out a new uh, recording software, so I'm actually commenting live. But that hardly matters. Now, the editor is a fun tool in which you can make your own maps as well as your own rules. On this video, we're going to focus on the map first. So, you open up the editor and you're faced with a big world full of ocean. Now, what can you do here? First of all, you can build land. Choose a terrain type. Let's say we want to build some grassland. Go up here. And these are the different sizes of squares. You can build one by one, three by three, five, and seven. So you just press where you want it. And, well, there's a little bit of lag in my system, but you get the idea. They, um, they place it down for you. Also, you can, you can see that um, coastline surrounds it. That's pretty much automatic. And if you notice that little dot on that one piece of grassland, that is what they call bonus grassland, which gives you one more shield than normal grassland. Now I'll demonstrate by putting in a bigger size. There we go. Let's throw in some other landforms just because we can. All right, mountains, hills. There's a few things to get used to with the editor. For instance, you can't go directly. The only terrain that can touch tundra, besides hills and mountains, is grassland. You can't go from plains to tundra. Also, when you build a desert and you build a river through it, that will automatically turn it into floodplain. All right, let's throw in some forest here. All right. Now there is a basic little island there. Now, right next to it here, you can put resources. Like say we want some horses. And you can only put resources on the tiles on which they uh, would naturally go. For instance, I can't put iron on the plains, but I can put it on the hills or mountains. Alright, so, um, under here are the, um, resources as well as luxuries, such as dyes and bonus, um, bonus resources. For example, fish give you more food can only be put in the water naturally. And gold. Which gives you more, well, gold, naturally. Alright. In this one, you get overlays, which means just um, things that go on top of the terrain. For example, we can build a river. Building a river is a little bit tricky. It's hard to get exactly the way you want it until you've had some practice, but um, the key is to click on the corners instead of the regular terrain. See, there we have a river going to the land. Goody Hut, if you remember these from the game, they give you um, a surprise when you enter them. Alright, what else we have here? Barbarian Encampment. Now if um, your game is on, uh, you know, barbarians that are raging or random or roaming, they'll appear automatically, though you can have some appear on their own. Also, you can do, you can actually build things that you would normally not build until a player is started. For example, you can build a road. For, 
like such. You can also build just about anything. So a lot of times I like to um, put make a game where I'm saying, uh, you know, this is a the ruins of a lost civilization, and then just put roads and things like that. It's pretty fun. For example, one might say if this was a scenario, that this was a, um, a former civilization was located here, but they were destroyed, and only barbarians are what's left. Fun things like that. As you can see, I put the barbarian hut on top of the iron. Now, the next main feature that I want to talk about is that you can actually place cities. So what we were going to do is hit spacebar which brings up this menu as select active player there are three main options you can choose to make them bar to make things for barbarians you can choose which civilization you want or what player number you want now you might not think there's a difference but there is for example um, if you build cities for Rome um, you will play them if you choose to be Rome, but the AI will play them if they choose not to be. But if you put cities for player one, you will be player one, no matter what civilization you choose. But let's decide to do Rome. You've noticed that these two have become ungray. Now what we're going to do is select a city, select a city size, we're just going to put a town, and over here we're going to put it. Right, should um, automatically give it a name, and we're going to go to properties. Now you can choose what goes there. Now let's say you want this to be the capital, so put starting location. And let's say we want stuff to already be in it. Let's say it already has a palace. I had to hold down control to do this. So let's say there's already a palace barracks, a temple, marketplace, and a bank there. Suppose it's a set size of 5 and has a culture of say 300. Press apply and you'll notice as soon as I apply it the borders have enlarged. Of course as soon as you start playing the game that barbarian hut's going to disappear but that's alright. One other thing right next to it you can actually build a unit so let's say we want a warrior we can put a warrior in the city we can put one over here and the default is to make them regular as opposed to veteran or elite but you can change that see tile properties you have tile and units alright he's a warrior you can even give him a name we're gonna make him a veteran and we're going to apply. You don't have to press apply, but it's always a good idea to do so. Alright. Well, I've shown you the basics of creating terrain, cities, and units. We'll go into that in more detail in the next video, as well as talking about the rule editor, which is a lot of fun. So. Stay tuned, everybody. So long.